Hello, denizens of the internet. Fallout has come to Amazon Prime. Warning, there will be spoilers. In an unusual move, they have pulled a Netflix and given us all the episodes at once. I I'm not a fan of the big dump. Perhaps I'm, I'm just too wired to the old-style network weekly anticipation model. But Amazon and the producers decided that this was the best way for us to enjoy the series or understand the series. Maybe they were afraid of normies not cottoning on to it and giving up after just the first show. I've only seen episode one because I'm going to give it my green light yes or no pilot treatment. A quick overview of what I'm looking for in this show as a former network executive. First off, you don't have a show without an interesting premise. I'm a high-concept fan. Shows like The A-Team, another thing networks used to do is hire a popular star to attract viewers, like James Garner in The Rockford Files. At the very least, a new actor or actress has to have charisma. Then it's great stories and supporting cast. Fallout definitely fits the high-concept criteria. Does it have a well-known star? Well, not in the lead, but Kyle MacLachlan is in it, albeit briefly. So that doesn't count. So are the actors engaging and charismatic? The lead, Ella Purnell, as Lucy, is more than serviceable in the pilot and reasonably engaging, but so far she isn't the driving force pushing my viewing interest to watch the next show in the way I was for Lindsay Wagner or Linda Carter. Walter Goggins as the ghoul is uh, well, a slam dunk. The rest of the cast is shockingly uninteresting except for the blonde woman who got the fork in her eye. <laughs> well, she seemed to transcend the few moments of screen time she got. Perhaps she should have been the lead? Anyway, Casting for a show is a real crapshoot as you go through the audition process, even if you filmed the actors so you could see how they come across on a TV screen. And yet, in the final product, they could give you zero feels. I have often said it's because of that damn piece of glass in front of the camera. Some performances it lets in, and others it just bounces them off. It's magic. Fallout is an adaptation of a game. Do you go for the fans or the newbies or try to please both? The game has many stories that would be easy to translate into a TV show. The show explores something that has not appeared in any of the games. Therefore, something totally new in a TV show makes some sense, although HBO's The Last of Us was a huge hit by adhering very closely to the original. That being said, there is way more world building in Fallout available to the producers to play with than The Last of Us. And in many ways, Fallout is a wink and a nod to a branded dystopian future stuck in a 1950s family sitcom like Ozzy and Harriet. Strangely, none of that tongue in Cheek managed to make it into the Brotherhood of Steel segments, which were awful, and the resurrection of the ghoul was plain embarrassing. I don't know what they were thinking. Maybe they ran out of budget. But let's go through the highlights of the show. We get introduced to our idyllic 1950s utopia. Our future ghoul is a TV cowboy who has fallen on hard times and made fun of by the father of the kid the birthday kid. Because, you know, there's always a white asshole in the 1950s. Where's Biff when you need him? Future ghoul packs up to go home with his daughter when the nuclear apocalypse ruins the party. Isn't it always the way? White asshole tells his black friend that he's not invited into the bomb shelter with them. I don't get the point they were trying to make with their sledgehammer. Cut to 219 years later, and we're in Vault 33. Lucy is applying to get knocked up from someone from Vault 32 for gene pool reasons. She gets her approved status over her Pip-Boy, an iconic Fallout device. No Pip-Boy, no Fallout. We get preparations for a wedding scene, 
Annabelle O'Hagan playing Bestie Stephanie, who is actually my favorite character in the pilot because she gets a fork in the eye and goes on a raging killing spree. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We meet the folks from Vault 32 and their overseer. We meet the hunk assigned to impregnate Lucy, a shy boy. The folks of Vault 32 are curiously slovenly. Hmm, I'm getting a bad vibe here. Lucy and Hunk get married. Hunk hints at his intentions. Lucy keeps her wedding dress on while riding the bratwurst. But something is amiss. The dude is radioactive. He's a surface dweller, a raider. A pretty decent fight ensues. Lucy gets stabbed, not passing that wedding dress down anymore. Hunk gets clunked on the head. Back at the fake farm, carnage ensues. It's filled with stylized gore, fallout fun played to some crooning standard. Not a nice way to thank the neighbors. It ends with a scene I had to review several times because I didn't get it. Dad Overseer says he knows who Bad Overseer is suddenly. She gives Dad the choice of ending the folks on their knees or his daughter. So he scoots Lucy off into some protective room where she screams, no, no, no. He says, you are my world. Then he gets shot full of tranquilizer darts. I'm including this shot because I think it's badass. Dad gets dragged away. The bad lady holding some trigger device tells the gang on their knees to go run and hide. They run and hide. Bomb goes off and nothing happens to anyone or the vault. So I have no idea what the point of the bomb was or why Lucy had to be sequestered away. The show turns to incomprehensible nonsense from here on in. I'll keep it short. Erin Moten, playing Maximus, is an uninteresting actor playing an even more uninteresting part. It's one cliche after another. Bunch of guys beat on Maximus while Johnny Cash plays in the background. Oh, I, I get the prison connection. Subtle as a bagel at a bris. Some kind of military boot camp. The writers are setting up the Brotherhood of Steel. Our hero gets whacked in the head with a ruler, answering a question incorrectly in class. That's exactly what happened to, uh, in my grade four class with the Miss Buckweaver. We get to see the famous power armor. The flying vehicle effects are actually pretty good. DEI checkbox hire sexually ambiguous Dane in a totally unmotivated scene gets Maximus to visit unguarded power armor, WTF. Dane gets some kind of promotion. Maximus is mad and takes it out on the shitter box. I'm utterly lost right now. Sexually ambiguous person gets hurt and uninteresting hero gets blamed. Back in Vault 33, they are cleaning up the carnage and taking out the trash. Lucy proposes to remaining vaulters that they should go look for her dad on the forbidden surface. Of course, they say yes. No, you dumbasses. They say no, of course. Any guesses what happens next? Uh, you, in the back. Uh, she leaves anyway without them knowing, except at the last minute they come after her to try to stop her. <laughs> How did you guess? Aren't these the people who did Westworld? Excellent uh, point there. Yes, these bozos play out the obligatory scene. But why are they standing there calmly? In the previous scene, they were scared as plums in an Italian picnic that the surface is a radiation hellhole and they have never opened the door to the outside. Look, the door to the outside is open. Why are you standing there, you morons? Because the writers told them to. Lucy is now locked outside. She walks about and finds this ocean vista. Do you know what she never does during this entire sequence? Check her pit boy for radiation. Wouldn't that be the first thing you'd do? Not that she could do much about it, but Jesus, this is stupid. Back at the Brotherhood, we get a ridiculous interrogation scene with 
someone in power armor shuffling menacingly behind Maximus back and forth in one of the dumbest excuses for writing I've seen since Ahsoka. Maximus is elevated to power armor bum boy. As previously mentioned, if you thought the last scene or this, this, this scene was barely tolerable, we then get to the final sequence that makes the Apple Dumpling Gang looks like Shakespeare. These useless turds dig up the ghoul and guess what happens? They all get killed? Yeah, right again. You'd be a writer in Hollywood right now if you weren't white. The show mercifully ends. Before I deliver my verdict, I just want to say that a script is just a series of choices. Lucy is on a hero's journey, but I can't seem to get worked up about her searching for her father. Uh, not yet. If the dude who uh, boinked her and then tried to kill her actually got away, I, I could see her wanting to finish the job. So, green light, yes or no? I think they got the intro part mostly right. The tone of Vault 33 was pretty damn good. The Raiders were a bit too on the nose. I would have thought that the gag should have been that they were even cleaner and more polite than the Vault 33 gang, which would have then made the murderous Rampage even funnier. <laughs> what do I know? As I mentioned before, the entire Brotherhood of Steel segment was boring with a lead character I actually disliked and the fallout humor was entirely missing. The power armor is actually very funny in the game. Not here, however. If this had landed on my desk as the rough cut uh, of the pilot, I'd get them to reshoot and fix the Brotherhood and the ghoul resurrection parts. Lucy is okay. She's cute. She's risen to the level of charming. I'll, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt Waiting for the ghoul and his dog? Well, that would be hard to screw up. Green light or not, I'm, I'm gonna give it the barest of yes for the following reasons. One, the first shows are always the hardest. Trust me, I've, I've been through it. And it had more hits than misses. Hopefully they realize their mistakes and have figured things out uh, by episode two. There you go, denizens. Have you seen the show or all the shows? Uh, what do you think? Till next time, be seeing you.